Hey Ammon 800s, it's Jason from Red Dragon Amalite Canada. This is part three of the ongoing video series from Red Dragon Amalite Canada detailing all things Ammonite and Amalite. Today's topic is going to be gemstone production. So let's actually make a gemstone pendant or let's actually make some earrings. Uh, again, there's a simple five step process to this. Select, stabilize, cut, polish and finish. Um, all right, let's begin. Okay, so the first thing, obviously, we want to we want to understand what we want to create. So when you're selecting a piece of amylite, again, as I mentioned, are you going to make a bracelet? Are you going to make an art piece? Are you going to make jewelry of some sort? So you want to have that question before you begin as well. Do you what kind of rounds do you want to use? Am I going to make a triplet? Am I going to make a cabochon? Am I going to make a doublet, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. So again, lots of things to think about. But I want you to come on in here. I want you to see this. I want you to come in here and take a look at a few plates. Uh, this will help us understand the design concept. So again, here is what we're going to start out as. So a very, very thick plate from a uh, concretion. Uh, you can see lots of color there. So I want to find an area where I see that color and I know I'm going to have to isolate that color and further work with it. So say I like this area. I'm going to slab it, so I'm going to cut it in half so I can start to get some usable pieces to work with. And again, I'm looking for areas that I'm going to isolate for further uh, gemstone and jewelry production. Uh, again, moving on, the, then this plate can be basically cut down, again, using a slab saw. And again, we're always going to use goggles. Uh, we're always going to have safety in mind, especially when we're using the big, big rock saws. So we get it to this point here, and then we finally get it down to sizes that we want to work with here. So you can see I've got a couple small guys here. I, actually, you know what, let's do this one today. You can see some really nice gemstone here. So you know what, I want to make a, a pendant out of this. And obviously, looking at the density of it is very important. Density is going to determine if I have to stabilize it, which is step two. So looking at stabilization, you can see how thin this guy, this is pure amylate here. Flip this guy over and you can just see it's literally flaking off on the table. So if I'm going to make a, a pendant or jewelry out of this guy, I'm going to want to stabilize it. So I'm going to put Opticon all the way around the edges or, or some other stabilizer. And I'm also going to put Opticon through the middle or through I, where I want to cut. This will allow me to cut through the Opticon without shattering everything. And then I'll be able to buff the Opticon off later. So again, extremely delicate to work with this kind of amylite. So you know what? Today, let's look at... Let's look at this guy, and again, if you want to see more on stabilization and whatnot, you can visit, uh, the, our, you can visit our website. You can see Corey Morgan uh, schooling me on how to put together a fossil. Uh, very funny, guys. But you know what? Let's, uh, let's turn this guy into a beautiful natural pendant. Okay, so come on over here. Now that we know that the density uh, is... I don't need to stabilize this guy, so now I'm going to use a, a standard rock saw. So. Uh, four to five inch blade. This is a diamond coated blade. Again, I'm wearing gloves today for protection. It also has a blade protector here. Uh, so again, always safety first when you're cutting. Uh, again, so I'm going to look at this and I'm going to want to make a pendant out of this. So I'm going to turn the rock saw on and I'm going to cut straight through here. It's going to give us a little bit of matrix. It's going to give us a little bit of extra that we can use for other things down the road. But I can obviously see a beautiful pendant out of this guy. Okay, so I'm going to cut this guy here. We're going to turn on our rock saw and away we go. You're just going to feed it through nice and gently with your fingers, both fingers on each side. Again, take it slow and easy. Once you've got all the way through, and we just turn her off. Now I've cut all the way through. You can see that it still needs to, it still needs to go through the other steps, but now that I've cut it, uh, Easy stuff, guys. Easy stuff. But at least I know where my gemstone is going to be. And you know, while we're on cutting, there's some actually, there's some really interesting technologies out there, uh, such as water jets, actually. Come on in here. You can actually see a piece that was actually cut by a local company in Calgary using water jets. So you can actually see a, a really beautiful art piece that they were able to carve. And again, they were able to do so because of the density of this material. This was a lot easier to work with. The dragon skin is, uh, is a lot denser, so it's, it's a lot thicker. So definitely easy to work with. And of course, uh, if you're going to cut this with any, any method, you definitely want to use eye protection. Okay, guys, so moving on. We want to talk about polishing and whatnot. So I've got a couple pieces here. Now, I'm going to use standard 400 grit or 180 grit uh, sandpaper with a little bit of water. So 
the lower the, the, the grade would be, the coarser would be the lower and the higher, 400, 600 would be very fine. So again, I want to make sure I've got a little water on this guy. And I'm going to polish just a little bit to try to bring that color out before I put it on my lapidary. I actually remember the very first time that I was polishing with Richard Morgan, the owner of the Ammonite factory in uh, Canmore, Alberta. Uh, he's been working with Amlite for over 30 years, um, and he took me as his understudy, and I remember the first day, we're in his studio, of course, and, and I'm surrounded by, you know, all this color and so much Amlite, m the most I've ever seen before in my entire life, and uh, Rick walks me through the same process that I'm walking you through, and uh, here, you know, 10 minutes in after showing me one piece, he, uh, he looks at his watch and he, he basically tells me he's got to walk his dog. He left me for about four hours. You know, guys, I was so nervous. I was so afraid that I was going to lose all the color and I didn't know what I was doing. So you know what, guys? It taught me a valuable lesson. You know what? It just taught me to trust my artistic instincts. Uh, you know, just to go with the flow. And you know what? If, uh, if you make a mistake, you make a mistake, guys. Uh, Rick came in a few hours later. It was hilarious. He looked at the pieces I've done and, and he was pretty impressed. And I just thought that was very funny. Uh, I was just so nervous. Okay, so now we're getting to the point here. I've used my sandpaper. I've definitely uh, got a little bit of a better shine. Now I'm gonna get my uh, lapidary going. So this is a diamond coated uh, lapidary wheel. Uh, this is gonna be able to buff down all of uh, the excess that I wanna take off to shape my pendant. So now to give you an idea, here's a little piece of matrix. So you can see, you can see the color on this guy. Now I'm gonna turn on, turn this guy on and get my water going. There we go, I've got water, here we go, so, oh! <laughs> like I say guys, mistakes happen, okay. You can see how the color comes out once you start buffing, isn't that beautiful? And again, a very, very gentle touch. You don't want to go too, too hard or else you will just literally blow off all this color. Okay, I'm going to take this guy, so now let's, let's go back to what we're working on. So I definitely want to take, I want to take this side down quite a bit. And again, obviously water is very, very important. That's obviously going to save and extend the life of your, uh, of your lapidary saws. And what I'm doing is I'm just rounding that side out. And you can just see how, how thin this stuff is literally coming off in my hands. The vibration of the wheel takes it off. rounded edge on that guy. I'm gonna round this guy out. Beautiful. Beautiful. Look at this guy here. And you can see all the gemstone on, on my finger. So again, guys, you can just see how delicate this is. And I'm going to want to keep these pieces as well. Again, these could be very useful down the road to make triplets and other gemstone jewelry. So again, now the next step, now I can turn my, turn my guy off here. Now the next step after this, again, we want to, we want to be able to, to put jewelry quality resin, two-part epoxy resin on it. Uh, or you can certainly buff it. Uh, you can... Uh, there are definitely industry experts that feel buffing is the best way for amylite. Again, that's really up to you. you got to make your own choices. Uh, dried it. Again, natural. This is not machine created. This is just created from myself. Very simple. This is where the uh, jewelry will be set. So the, uh, the, uh, the bail uh, attaching the pendant to the jewelry. So now I want, to, I want to coat this guy with some glaze. So stay with me down here. And I've already mixed my glaze, of course, because uh, you do have to let it set for quite a while. This is a two-part uh, epoxy jewelry grade resin. Uh, again, I'm just choosing a wooden stick. That's the easiest. Uh, again, I'm going to put it in there and I want to put it on very gently and very delicately. I want to spread that around. And again, I'd only be doing this if I felt that it was polished enough and if I felt that the shape was there, 
I'm feeling pretty confident about this guy here. As you can see, as the as the resin comes on, it's going to take the hardness from about four on the most scale to about eight. So we're just going to make sure that it's just below diamonds, which are ten. Uh, and of course, again, you can just see these brilliant colors come out. You can see I'm taking everything right to the edges. And this guy here, this is only the first coat in probably two or three coats because again, we want to be able to get the resin all the way around nice and even. And I'm just checking for bubbles. I'm just rotating it a bit. So now that I've got the first coat on, I'm going to want to dry this guy. So again, very gently, I'm going to take this, I'm going to set this down. Very gently, I'm going to leave it down. Again, this is actually a really good piece to work with because it's very level. So that I don't need to put anything underneath that to lift it up because again, any kind of angles, well, your resin will certainly run off. So now at this point, it's going to be about 12 to 24 hours to dry. So depending on how much heat I apply. And again, you can apply uh, definitely other heat. And as well, there's other technologies uh, such as uh, ultraviolet light. Uh, you're, you'll be able to definitely dry it a lot quicker, three to five seconds. Uh, again, all kinds of technologies out there. So as I mentioned from here, we would take the, the resin, we would apply the resin, wait for it to dry, and then of course over here, you can see the finished product. There's some loose gemstones from Red Dragon Amlite Canada, and then you can see some of our finished jewelry. And again, this finished jewelry went through the same process I'm showing you, it's just finished. So we've just put the, the bale on, the actual jewelry, jewelry aspect of it, or we have completed the cabochon and we've set it into the actual setting. Um, and you can obviously make art pieces. Uh, you can check out this art piece here, uh, obviously in, in lots, of, lots of different ways, uh, the same way, uh, lots of different coats rather, uh, depending on uh, what uh, the surface of the amylite looks like. All right, guys, well, you know what? We've taken you through the five-step process, uh, select, stabilize, cut, polish, and finish. Please visit, visit us at reddragonamylitecanada.com for more series videos detailing all things ammonite and amylite and also unrestricted exclusive access to the historic red dragon amylite mine. Thanks a lot guys, we'll see you next time.